Sorelgo RMD, Understanding IV Contrast Phases on CT. This video is going to be about why we use intravenous contrast in CT, how intravenous contrast works, and what we mean by different phases of IV contrast in CT. So for reference here, I have three CTs of the abdomen. They all look sort of similar, but they also look sort of different. And that's the point I'm trying to explain the different phases of intravenous contrast in CT. So remember, imaging is about intrinsic tissue contrast, the inherent tissue contrast within the body. How does CT expose that contrast? CT uses density to show me that intrinsic tissue contrast. Just for comparison's sake, the way that an MRI produces contrast has absolutely nothing to do with density. Okay, so this series here all the way on the left, this is a non-contrast CT study. What I'm really seeing here is a density map of the body based on the Hounsfield scale with the gray scale adjusted to a particular window width and level. What I'm seeing here visually is information about density. All right, I can see that the bone is really dense. I can see that the kidney is less dense than bone. And I can see that intra-abdominal fat is less dense than the kidney. All right, so how can I extract even more information from this CT density map the answer is by using intravenous contrast to alter the density of structures within the body. So what is intravenous contrast? Intravenous contrast is nothing but a water-soluble preparation of iodine. All right? Iodine is a dense material. By injecting this into the bloodstream, what I'm doing is artificially increasing the density of the blood pool, and then over time as the body processes this, the contrast, I'm artificially altering the density of solid organs. So let's just go through the process. All right? I have a patient with a peripheral IV. Through that IV, I infuse about 100 cc's of water-soluble iodine. From there, it takes a predictable course throughout the body. It flows into the right side of the heart. It travels through the lungs. It goes to the left side of the heart and then starts to get pumped out throughout the body. So initially, the contrast bolus is concentrated in the arteries. Right, over time, it's going to go through the different arterial branches. It's going to travel through the capillaries. And at that point, it's going to start enhancing solid organs. Okay, finally, it's going to travel into the veins. And then eventually, most of that contrast agent is going to be excreted by the kidneys. So when we're thinking about IV contrast use, we have to think about when do I perform that CT in order to capture that specific information, uh, that point in time where that contrast is flowing to the body. All right, so for example, if I want to capture that contrast bolus as it's traveling through the arteries, I have to image relatively early, about 20 seconds after injecting that IV contrast. All right, so actually this series right here in the middle, this is an arterial phase CT, and let's just go through some of the findings here. So first off, I can see that the arterial tree is extremely dense and bright and easy to see. I'm getting really good, uh, high-quality information about the arterial system structure. Again, that was not present on the non-contrast CT. I could use this structural information to plan a hepatic arterial intervention. Okay, I could also use the uh, contrast in the lumen to screen for vascular diseases like stenosis or pseudoaneurysm. Okay, so what other types of information is I, am I getting? As I come down to the kidneys, I'm noticing this characteristic enhancement pattern. I'm seeing differentiation of the cortex and medulla. And again, this was not present on the non-contrast study. And what is this telling me? This is actually giving me physiologic and anatomic information about the kidney. So the kidney cortex contains the highly vascular glomeruli, and the medulla contains the tubules where the content of the urine is adjusted. So what I'm seeing here is visually that information about the internal structure of the, of the kidney. And again, this information was not present on the non-contrast study. I'm adding information to the system. All right, so it's just to sum up, if I see a contrast-enhanced scan and I'm noticing a heavy opacification of the arteries and I'm noticing a cortical medullary phase enhancement of the kidney, I can be fairly certain this is an early phase or arterial phase CT scan uh, with IV contrast performed probably about 20 seconds after the administration of contrast. So let's move from this arterial phase CT to this last set of CT images. This is the portal venous phase and the nephrographic phase of IV contrast. So the, for comparison, the arterial phase was obtained about 20 seconds after contrast administration. 
Uh, this series here was obtained about 80 seconds after IV contrast administration. What is the information I'm seeing here? Well, first off, let's look at the liver. So I'm noticing that the liver parenchyma is really bright on this series. And if I compare it to the uh, non-contrast phase and even the arterial phase, I can see that the liver is only really bright on this portal venous phase CT. And in fact, that makes sense. So we read all the time on, in textbooks that the liver is 70% fed by the portal vein. And in fact, I have here visual confirmation of that because I'm seeing this homogeneous enhancement of the liver parenchyma. And if I look on this arterial phase CT, even though I'm seeing hepatic arterial enhancement, I'm not seeing liver enhancement. I'm only seeing liver enhancement on this phase where I see a good opacification of the portal vein and then good opacification or bright, brightness of the liver parenchyma. Right, this sort of proves to me that the hepatic arterial supply is non-dominant. And of course, we exploit that uh, characteristic trait of the liver in order to treat uh, liver tumors. So lastly, I just want to come back to the kidney. So uh, I said that this phase would also be considered the nephrographic phase. We can see that the kidney tissue, the parenchyma of the kidney, now has this homogeneous enhancement. I'm no longer seeing that cortical medullary differentiation. And again, this is just due to the timing of the contrast. That contrast is moving from the glomeruli into the tubules. And I get this homogeneous enhancement. This would be a great phase uh, of contrast to evaluate the kidney for focal lesions like renal cell carcinoma. It would also be a great phase in contrast to look for things like renal infarcts or look for uh, kidney infection, pyelonephritis. Right? So I just want to sum up. We use intravenous contrast to add information to a CT examination. All right? I think it's very useful to think of IV contrast as a water-soluble preparation of iodine that alters the density, okay, because that's what it is. And then the IV contrast enhancement, it follows a very predictable pattern uh, as that contrast flows throughout the body. All right, so by performing our CT at different time intervals, we get to see these different phases of IV contrast enhancement. All right, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you guys would like, I could definitely get more in-depth talking about liver protocol CTs, and renal protocol CTs and uh, pancreatic protocol CTs and things like that. So please drop me a line in the comments section. All right? Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe. All right? It's RelgRMD. I'm signing off. Thanks, guys, for watching. Take care.